What's going on, Doombots? Tony Skinjili here, finally talking about Emperor Zerg. So we got a Zerg event going on. It's changed a little bit from the beta, uh, not for the better, a little bit for the worse, but ultimately we're going to look at Zerg, the kind of character he is, what you have to do in the event, and if it's worth it. Long story short, yes. So starting off with zerg what we have with zerg is hands down no questions asked the best single target damage dealer in the game bar none there's not a single character who does the pure amount of damage to one character that zerg does just a quick look at why if you haven't seen his kit already his basic does a very large chunk of damage to an opponent three times it does bonus damage if the target is at higher health uh, basically, if the character is undamaged, this attack hits harder. Long story short. Uh, ultimately, this is a really great leadoff ability for Zerg, or after a turn or two have passed, if Zerg is still around, you can use it to start whittling down one of those big tanks that you tend to save for the end of the fight instead of killing first. Uh, his first special, or his actual special, is Zerg Vision, where he absolutely obliterates an opponent. Uh, it does a giant chunk of damage, uh, and if that character uh, is at half health or less, uh, it becomes an execute, or uh, it does 35% bonus damage. So kind of like how the basic hurts people with more health, uh, his special will absolutely completely take a character off the map, especially if they're about 50% health or less. If this character uh, is defeated with this attack, the character you target, you get another turn with Zerg, which is insane because Zerg is, once again, the best single target damage dealer in the game, uh, which sets up for his ultimate, or his best ability, uh, deals a small amount of damage uh, to a target 23 times. Uh, obviously, that small amount of damage scales, so the stronger your Zerg is, the larger that small number becomes, but ultimately, you're also doing it 23 times. That means each individual attack has a chance to crit as well as be evaded. Uh, there are some characters that it really does affect. Mostly think of characters that have evasion, like Aladdin. If you start this attack on a character that has a built-in evasion, the first attack will be evaded, it will remove the evasion, and then the other 22 attacks will hit him for... Well, if you look at this number right here, a ton of damage, almost more than the special in the perfect scenario. There is a small chance that every attack just chains to an adjacent opponent, uh, dealing roughly the same amount of damage. So even though you're not doing a ton, since there's 23 attacks and it happens about a quarter of the time, about five of the attacks on average are going to bump off to the left or to the right, depending on who you're targeting. So if there's a character with very low hit points and you think you can, you know, ricochet one attack into them for the kill, you may want to take that chance. Otherwise, this is an absolute nuke. It will take down a lot of characters and the most important thing is characters like Simba who uh, gain defense uh, as their health goes down this won't trigger that each independent attack doesn't trigger Simba's defense up so as you're attacking Simba with this uh, he does not get stronger the attacks don't do less because even though these are multiple attacks uh, his stats don't change in the middle of combat so you can use this to obliterate Simba very easily. The other two things to note about Zerg is he has a passive every three turns or so with the energy line. Uh, he just hits everybody. No one can avoid it. It doesn't matter if he's blinded. He just hits everybody on the field for the main target or whomever the highest health character is takes this much and then everyone else automatically takes this it doesn't matter if they have evasion it doesn't matter if zerg is blind this just happens it is great at setting up targets uh, also one of the things is it happens always on his first turn so sometimes you may see a character that might not be able to be taken out with his zerg vision it doesn't matter use the attack this will probably set that character up in part and the last thing is galactic evil this is very simple whenever he receives damage he has a chance to receive offense up for the turn if he's on a downtown villain team that chance goes up by 10 percent 
per downtown villain, so he can have almost a 50% chance whenever he gets hit for any reason to get offense up, which is usually good and a reason why you shouldn't necessarily single target Zerg unless you know you can take him out, because if Zerg stays alive with one hit point and offense up, he's probably going to kill one or two of your characters. So be careful about this when you're fighting him, and if someone does fight your Zerg and give him offense up, congratulations, you've won the fight. That said, there's a couple of things I'd like to know. While yes, most characters in the game are subject to the, if you can't finish them, they're not important rule, Zerg is one of the very few exceptions to that rule. Uh, a four, five, or six star Zerg is a threat to anyone who either doesn't have Zerg uh, and will be able to keep pace with other characters who do have Zerg. So, any opportunity you can to unlock this character, as opposed to some of the other more popular poor decision characters people invest early in, like um, Hades, or uh, Anger, or Judy Hops, uh, whenever you unlock Zerg, he's going to immediately have an impact on your team, uh, unlike some of the other characters, and that impact just goes up and up the more you put into him. So. Uh, for example, I have a gear tier 6 Zerg who just reached 6 star as of the event star, and I'm probably going to have him at 7 by the end of the event. He's been on my team since the beginning of the game, since I first unlocked him. Nothing's changed. He's been worth every investment. He's been helping me hold high arena. He's been helping me win in PvP arena and Sorcerer's Tournament. It is imperative uh, that you understand how important Zerg is to your team. And if you've been listening to me and paying attention and working on your downtown villains, this shouldn't be that difficult. That said, let's take a quick look at the event and discuss what you should be able to do and what you might not be able to do in general. So the event is called Queen's Clash. It comes with a couple of deals and gem offers for characters. Feel free to use them accordingly. These offers are just a little bit overpriced but since this team will carry you through all of the villains campaign anything that requires a downtown or a downtown villain character this is a little bit more worthwhile than say the lion king or the incredibles event these characters overall work better as a team they're useful for zerg this event doesn't come around that often if you are going to spend gems or money on anything make sure you spend them to try to get more character shards on good characters one two three four and whomever else they add uh, as for the Queen's Clash event itself, uh, obviously I'm not going to show you any gameplay because it doesn't matter. I'm sorry if you think it matters because it doesn't. You can either do it or you can't. The fights are not hard. Uh, that said, uh, as long as you have any villains, you should be able to get through the first two stages usually with no problem. Actually, you can check. You don't need many to progress up to the four event. Four four-star characters will help you in your quest to unlock Zerg, getting a flat number of shards every day, uh, or a flat number of shards upon first completion, as well as a decent chunk of heart coins every day, you should be well on your way to unlocking Zerg. He does unlock at four star, so getting up to this point, with a little luck, you should be okay. If you really paid attention and did your best to get these characters up, whether through money or target farming, as I've been suggesting for a lot of players, then you should be able to easily do the five event. The five event is going to guarantee through orbs and offers that you have enough chances to unlock Zerg without getting super uh, lucky, which is what ends up happening with the four star event. That said, any gems you would normally save for progressing, if you're not currently working on the downtown villains, I would use to refresh this event. As you may have noticed, I've refreshed it multiple times. The impact of Zerg is a one time thing for you once you unlock him or once you finish him you don't really have to worry anymore and as a result you end up with a very strong team that is good and zerg which is great on not only that team but quite literally every team in the game can use a zerg one of the reasons why he's one of the best characters uh, as for anyone else so we'll put players who spend money or players who have been playing for a while uh, when you start looking after that and entering the six star territory the fights are okay there's nothing crazy but the seven star territory is where i start having a real problem with this event i don't understand 
why they would make a requirement not only of stars stars i understand it stands to reason that you should have a full team of characters to accomplish a a ver that version of the character you know if you want to have a seven star zerg the team he should be on would probably also prefer to be at seven star that makes sense to me there's kind of a a, a understanding of cadence when it comes to unlocking characters at specific levels especially if they're part of the team you're using it's when you start adding gear tier that slightly upsets me and uh i i've been very kind to glue and the makers of dsa in my videos and very understanding and this is one of the things i'm gonna have to push back on there is no reason for a character's unlock to be gated behind gear at all you can choose stars, you can choose gear, you can choose team, but when you start adding multiples together, what you're actually doing is you're taking roughly 100% of the community that uh, is attempting to play your game for fun and forcing them down a path that is unnecessary to accomplish a task that should be available for everybody. I think adding gear to your requirements, not recommendations, of course, you should be able to accomplish tasks uh, under the recommendations, but a requirement specifically to have high gear, especially with how difficult it is to farm gear, not necessarily just for new players, but for anyone, uh, I think that's a pretty bad move. Uh, I would prefer if you start removing it. The only exception I have is the bonus event, as far as I'm concerned, since the bonus event shouldn't necessarily affect how likely you are to unlock zerg and it is just a bonus event for items i don't have a problem with any kind of control you put over it or telling players that this is not only the requirement it's actually the recommendation and the requirement because if you tried it without it it'd be too difficult because it's a bonus event that's like you said bonus it's okay but once you get to the core of the event i think adding a gear tier requirement or even making the fight so difficult they have a, a built-in gear tier recommendation or requirement uh that's a bad business decision that's poor game design and i would prefer if you avoid using poor game design in the future please remove things like gear tier six or any gear tier from future events and allow players to be able to progress their characters on one axis or even two axis as they're gonna have to have level and stars anyway in order to accomplish these tasks that said now that we've gotten that out of the way if you have the means and there are zerg offers which let's be clear they're going to be zerg offers buy them get zerg the earlier you get zerg the better you're going to be there's no team in the game right now that's better off without zerg it doesn't exist if you start talking about what teams you're using that don't have zerg it's probably because those teams are designed to counter teams that have zerg or teams that are truly end game viable like the mishmash teams you may end up seeing with jack um there are characters that do well against zerg but what zerg offers your roster at every level both from pve and pvp perspectives untouchable he completes a toy story team for club conquest whenever we get that again he uh, completes the downtown villains team for anything including off the top of my head scrooge mcduck's money heist and any of the villains campaign and of course any of the grand campaign the downtown villains is probably one of the best teams when completed to complete all of the pve requirements as well as a very good pvp arena and sorcerer's tournament team as you invest in them because zerg is top five characters in the game for my money because uh, his single target damage is literally un unbeatable there is not a single character in the game that can do as much damage to one character as consistently as zerg does whenever he gets a turn uh, even dash who does do a great deal of damage doesn't necessarily have targeted control over it zerg does he says this character goes down every time so i would recommend highly anyone willing to spend money to get a higher zerg do so but if you can spend a small amount of money to make sure that you unlock zerg i would also recommend that uh, the the impact he has on your roster at every stage of the game is so incredible what he will allow you to do for pvp arena especially against those who don't have him you will be literally shooting fish in a barrel with his nerf gun 
uh, that's pretty much it so do me a favor comment below let me know two things one uh if you intend on getting zerg this pass uh, and what that means to you what you're going to do uh, and two uh if you haven't had zerg and you've been getting molly whopped by zergs let me know why or how let me know what you think i think we can all agree that maybe this event could be a little bit more accessible to everyone who plays the game because there's going to be offers where i could spend money and have the problem so it doesn't necessarily matter uh, for whales, whales are going to be fine. We're going to be okay. I'm going to have my seven star Zerg no matter what. But I do want to make sure that other players have a sporting chance at getting him, even though he is great at four, five, and six star. Let's be clear. We all want to max out our characters here. Please help us do that. I don't care if it costs money, but definitely don't let the money be the best possible option. Let it be the quickest option. Uh, have a good night, guys. Have a great day. I've been Tony Skinjili, and I'll catch you later.